Patty, why is it you're making these films? Um, well, it's just easier to do. It's easier to do than um, painting. Well, because you just, uh, the camera has a motor and you just turn it on and you just walk away. It just takes all by itself. It's called Blonde and a Bum Trip. What's it about? It's, one of it's about um, <laughs> a naive young lady who goes to Hollywood to make it big. People in the factory was an extraordinary place. There must have been 15 or 20 people there. A lot of them on their way down uh, destroyed people. And it was sort of a halfway house. The factory, how to explain the impact of it, what it felt like, is something that probably hasn't happened in this century. It was just the ultra salon in the days of acid trips. It was high-powered lightning bolts, velvet underground, Andy Warhol, superstars, anyone who came to New York, you gotta go to the factory. You know, someone would bring you to the factory if you were famous at any rate. It, it was just the, the, the burner was always on. people had their hearts broken forever and ever. 
but it was really a rough democracy, you know. Anyone who came to the factory could have their screen test to be in the, the films. And it was just three minutes sitting in front of the camera where Andy would load the film in, focus it, and set the frame, turn it on, and walk away. And you were sitting there, for, it was up to you what you did. Usually people just sat still for like three minutes. The screen tests, Gerard Malanga recalled, were studies in subtle sadism. The camera was located relentlessly 15 feet away. The recorded results were often brutal. I looked like a refugee from the manager clinic, the actress Sally Kirkland said after seeing herself on screen. You sit staring at the camera, and after a while, your face starts to disintegrate. I feel pretty good about uh, being shown here at the Whitney Museum. Uh, oh, I don't know, Candy, what do you, what do you think? Well, it's well, good. This is the first time Candy's been here. to a museum. Oh, oh is it? You've never been to a museum before? Um, maybe when I was um, in school. But I, I live only across the street, so I can come here all the time. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. What do you think of the exhibit? Well, I think it's, um, it's colorful and... Uh, it's, uh, it's all right. There's a lot of room here. And does it matter to you that this is so, that they feel one way rather than another about you? Uh, oh, I don't really understand. What, what, what do you mean? Andy, a Canadian government spokesman said that your art could not be described as original sculpture. Would you agree with that? Ah, uh, yes. Why uh, do you agree? Well, because it's not original. You have just then copied a common uh, item. Yes. Well, why have you bothered to do that? Why not create something new? Uh, because it's easier to do. Well, isn't this sort of a joke, then, that you're playing on the public? Uh, no. It gives me something to do. I think there are an awful lot of pompous things about your work and what it means in the 20th century and everything. Do you agree with any of it? Uh, can I just answer a little bit? Yes, you can. Uh, mm.